Born September 4, 1997, Jesse Baird was an Australian TV presenter and reporter. He was also a football umpire and officiated many football matches. Jesse had a passion for the media from a young age. He had worked as a host for various television shows. His umpiring career was also very promising since its start in 2011. He even bagged a medallion for being the most promising AFL umpire in 2020 and 2021. Jesse was described as talented, effervescent, and caring. His colleagues at Network 10 considered him more than just a co-worker. He was like a little brother, always joking around with a big, beautiful smile. His presence in the media industry was marked by his ability to host all kinds of shows, always partaking in daring activities. Jesse also had a boyfriend, Luke Davies, an equally talented young man who worked as a flight attendant at Virgin Australia. They were known for their zest for life, passion, and promising futures. By February 2024, the duo had been dating for a few weeks, and their vibrant social life could be seen on social media. Their last post on Instagram together shows the two having the time of their lives at a pink concert. They were known as a fun-loving couple who enjoyed socializing and various outdoor activities. On the evening of February 20th, 2024, Baird was supposed to umpire an AFL match, but he failed to show up. Luke had also not been seen in the past few days. This raised concerns for the friends and family of the duo. They had last been seen on the evening of February 18th, 2024, at Bearsford Hotel, attending an opening party for the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras Festival. But what could cause this couple to disappear from the limelight in just one day? This is when Jesse's mother raised concerns about her son's ex-boyfriend, Beau Lamar. His mother suspected that Lamar had something to do with her son's disappearance as he'd been stalking Jesse. She claimed he regularly turned up at his house unannounced. The police facts also state she was of the belief that if anything happened to her son, that Bo would be responsible. Now On Monday, February 19th, neighbors heard gunshots at Baird's Paddington home at about 9.50 a.m. A nearby CCTV camera captured the audio of three shots fired. A few minutes later, a frantic Luke made an emergency call to the police. A man's voice was heard on the other side shouting, get out and F off. Soon afterwards, the call ended. Police dispatched a patrol car to the area, but they didn't have enough information to take any action. That same night at 8 p.m., Luke's housemate arrived at the residence and found two surfboard bags on the premises. The housemate had no clue as to what was inside those bags and prodded them with his fingers. A used bullet cartridge was also found at the scene. On February 20th, Bo Lamar told an acquaintance about his involvement regarding the disappearance of two people. On February 21st, police found some items belonging to Jesse Baird and Davies in a skip bin. This included bloodied clothing, an $8,000 watch, a credit card, and a wallet. By now, police had launched a missing persons investigation. Police started their search at Jesse Baird's home. In the kitchen, they found a significant amount of blood suggesting that somebody had bled heavily. They also found three cleaners who were cleaning the premises, but were quickly stopped by the police to stop further interference with the crime scene. On the top of the kitchen cabinet, police found a 40 caliber bullet hole. On the same day, Bo took the assistance of a female friend to buy some items. The police stated that the friend had no direct involvement in the murder. She was simply a clueless person helping her friend out with an errand. She fully cooperated with the police during the investigation. The woman accompanied Lamar to a hardware store where he bought an angle grinder and a padlock. The two then went to a rural property in Bungonia. Lamar had previously rented a white high ace van and was using it that day. Upon reaching the property, the angle grinder was used to break a padlock and a new one was used in its place. Shortly afterwards, the two drove back to Sydney. Later the same day, he went back to the same property. It is alleged that he may have thought of moving the bodies to a different location. On Thursday, February 22nd, Lamar used the white van to go to Bungonia at 4.30 in the morning. Later that day, he drove to the property of his friend in Newcastle, who was a former police officer. Here he asked for a hose to clean up his car, which was allegedly covered in blood. Meanwhile, the police held a press conference about the disappearance of the couple. Police released the news that they are searching for a police officer in relation to the couple's disappearance. 
Lamar's time as a free man was soon to be over, as the police raided the home of his family members at 11 p.m. on Thursday. They found some suspicious items, which were seized by authorities. By the early morning of Friday, February 23rd, Lamar was still in Newcastle. He arrived back in Sydney at 6.15 in the morning. Police found his white Toyota Hiace scene, a location called Gray's Point. By 11 a.m. that day, Lamar had turned himself into the police at Bondi Police Station. He had been submitted for two counts of murder. He will be formally refused bail by police and expected to uh, face court um, at some stage, whether it be today or tomorrow. Through the evidence that's been located to date. Police charged him with two counts of murder. When appearing before the Waverley local court, Lamar did not apply for bail. Police continued their search for the bodies of Jesse and Luke. They searched waterways in Newcastle. They suspected that these were the places he had visited before turning himself into the police. On February 25th, police extended their search to the rural Bungonia property, which Lamar had visited earlier. They explored the surrounding areas and the water bodies around it. They failed to find anything. Two days later, detectives interviewed Lamar at Silverwater Jail. It is said that Lamar revealed some information with reference to the location of the bodies. Based on this information, police established the crime scene at a property in Bungonia. This was about 20 minutes away from the first property. Police seized a small boat for investigation and searched Grey Points, the place where Lamar abandoned the white van he used. By 5.30 p.m. on February 27th, Police Commissioner Karen Webb released a statement. We believe we have located two bodies. The area was immediately declared a crime scene. The bodies were found in two surfboard bags which were covered in debris. Lamar had initially bought one surfboard bag, which proves that the murder was premeditated, but later bought another one for Luke. These were the surfboard bags that Jesse's housemate had found on his property. You were looking at accused killer Bo Lamar Condon at Miranda Westfield just three hours after he allegedly murdered Jesse Baird and Luke Davies. He walks out of a sports store with a surfboard bag under his arm. The police case is he bought the bag to carry the body of Luke. Two days earlier, before the alleged murders, same store and same purchase. The police constable walking in with a friend. They leave with a surfboard bag slung over his shoulder. This time, a bag police alleged to use to dispose of Jesse. The families of the couple were notified about the devastating news. Grieving family members made arrangements to travel to the area where their loved ones' bodies had been found. Bonia, it's 10 News First reporter Samara Gardner. Samara, what more can you tell us about where Luke and Jesse were found? Where we are here in Bungonia, it's quite a remote uh, area and just a few minutes ago the family of Luke Davies and Jesse Baird have travelled down to the scene. The bodies of their loved ones remain here tonight. Uh, just a few hours ago they were discovered by police. Uh, their bodies, we were told, were found inside surfboard bags along the side of a road near a boundary fence. It's not far from where police had been searching over the last couple of days but it certainly wasn't in the direct vicinity and of course they were only came uh, to be here after uh, chatting with the accused earlier. Many members of the LGBTQIA plus community shared heartfelt tributes to the vibrant couple. Jesse's cousin Austin shared a heartfelt message about his tragic passing. He wrote, Jesse, my first ever best friend, I am beyond devastated. I still can't believe it. Most of my favorite memories in life were me, Luke, Brendan and you riding motorbikes, skiing, boating and camping. I'll never forget our chats, all the times we would hang out on the weekends and go away with family and friends. I told you things I'd never tell anyone. I trusted you, I've laughed and cried in front of you. I'll love and remember you forever, mate. It is an honor to be your cousin. Till we meet again. Supporters on the internet have posted numerous tributes to Jesse and Luke. Evidently, the case has been seen as a crime of passion rather than a gay hate-related event by Commissioner Karen Webb. Tarnine Onis Brown, an activist for the LGBTQIA community, expressed sorrow and called for justice to be served. 
Rest in power, Jesse Baird and Luke Davies. I'm absolutely devastated. Sending lots of love to their families and colleagues. What a horrific loss. Justice for Jesse Baird and Luke Davies, Brown wrote on their social media pages. A GoFundMe was set up for Luke's family in the wake of his passing. Luke's mother thanked the supporters for their heartfelt love and support as they managed to raise more than $70,000. Network 10, the Australian news channel was forever robbed of Jesse Baird's talents. They paid tribute to Jesse and celebrated the accomplishments he achieved during his short life on Earth. We want to celebrate Jesse for the man he was and not the way he died. Here's how we remember him. Amazingly talented, funny, beautiful, inside and out, and forever loved and missed. Jesse Baird was one of those rare people who was a complete natural on TV. He began his career while still a teenager when he won the coveted role of reporter on the children's show Totally Wild, a job that not only had him talking to the animals, but also fanging around in supercars, going all Tom Cruise in a stunt plane and leaping off tall structures in a single bound. As JB, he hosted the show Gamify. Before joining Studio 10 as our Queensland roving reporter and then heading to Sydney to join the team at HQ. And it was here he well and truly proved he could turn his hand to any part of the TV business. That was a spectacular ending. Crossing live from the outback. A world record for the most amount of people doing the nut push. How are you feeling, bloke? <laughs> I think you're about two minutes behind, Sally. Sharing his lunch with a giraffe. <laughs> oh, get involved, Jess. I don't oh. know. Shooting hoops. <laughs> Wrangling celebrities on the red carpet, Jesse Baird was to be around someone truly special. A brilliant colleague, a loyal friend, a cherished son and brother, and the life of every party. Upon autopsy of Jesse Baird, police found that the cause of death was a gunshot wound. The murder weapon was confirmed to be a pistol belonging to Lamar. It was a Glock pistol which he returned to the police station after committing the crime. People have also questioned the gun handling procedures which allowed Lamar to use his police-issued gun while he was off duty. Bo Lamar was charged with two counts of murder. It is alleged that he originally planned on just killing Jesse. But Luke became the collateral damage as he was also at the premises. It seems as if Bo Lamar was a jealous ex-lover who simply wanted revenge on his former partner. However, a close friend of Jesse stated that they never actually dated. It was Lamar who harbored one-sided feelings for Baird, which resulted in a messy love triangle. According to Jesse's friend, Lamar had been stalking him since late 2023 he would even come by Jesse's Paddington house uninvited. Jesse confided in his friends that he saw shadowy figures around his bed, but couldn't find out who the person was. Sadly, these accounts weren't reported to the police. Who knows what would have happened if Jesse had reported these instances. If we look back on the life of Lamar, there's not much that seems odd or reflective of his future behavior. Bo Lamar grew up in Kirawi with a mother who was a former police officer and a father who worked as a security guard. His parents separated during his primary school years. This resulted in him becoming estranged from his father. He also had a troubled relationship with his sister. So, Bo didn't have stable relations with his close family. However, his online persona depicted a life of glamour, rubbing shoulders with different celebrities. He was really interested in being famous so he made blogs about celebrities when he was younger to get close to them by doing interviews and pictures. He was known by many to be a clout chaser who used to run after celebrities. His social media showcased an extravagant lifestyle, much to the curiosity of his colleagues. Other than that, Lamar was seemingly normal. No one had any idea that a cold-blooded murder existed behind this police constable. Bo Lamar remains in Silverwater Prison and has been denied bail after the murder, he has been served a notice for dismissal from the police force by NSW Police Commissioner Karen Webb. He is expected to appear before court on April 23, 2024. Let's see what the jury decides for his future life. Thank you for watching. 
If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any more true crime videos. See you in the next video.